Hello YouTube land, thanks for stopping by. Um, before we get into the, the meat of this video, uh, Lydia's gonna say a few words. Thank you for watching our video. If you like what you see and want to watch my recovery for the diabetic stroke, keep it up, him up, subscribe, I'll ring a bell for on it for notification. Nice. Wanna do it again? No. <laughs> it was back in November when Lydia had the idea of going to the pool for our own aqua therapy or water therapy. I procrastinated a little bit but finally registered to go to the pool and with uh, COVID-19 only 12 people are allowed in the pool at a time, two people per lane. Um, we have to wear masks except for a went in the pool itself. Uh, our, the, our, the lifeguard that is on duty has to wear a mask all the time. So we are doing the social distancing at the pool. <clears throat> um, we have to register in advance, basically a week in advance if we want to get our spots. Uh, but we go three times a week uh, to the pool. And um, it wasn't, uh, we weren't advised to go to the pool. It was just something that we thought of. Uh, let's go to the pool and when we brought it up to our physical therapist she's like that's good um, but there are certain things to be uh, aware of when we got there we got into the pool and on the last step right before she was to let go of the the safety rail uh, to be fully into the pool um, four feet by the way um, she panicked and didn't want to go any further. She wanted to turn around and go out. And uh, we got this far and I was kind of, uh, I wanted her to succeed at this. Um, so before she could turn around, um, I held her uh, and I uh, picked her up and I slowly brought her into the pool and where she cried for a good five minutes. And the lifeguard saw that we were struggling a little bit and brought a pool noodle for Lydia to uh, rely on, to hold on to something, to get, give her some stability. And um, she wasn't flailing around or anything like that as a, a, a panic attack, you know, as you see, but she did panic. And I think it could have been a lot worse if, uh, you know, we've heard stories. Uh, that uh, it could be or ha could have been uh, a lot worse than what it was. But thankfully, it took Lydia about 10 minutes to get accustomed to being in water again. And we started our aqua therapy at that point. Certain things to keep in mind. If you are going to try this uh, on your own or with a physical therapist, certain things to keep in mind so when we were doing this. Uh, one is uh, the water is cold. And for those people uh, doing laps and stuff, doing the, having the physical exertion, it's probably fine. But for us that are just walking and doing uh, short, uh, small movements in the pool, uh, the, the water is cold. And so we had to prepare for that um, uh, at first, we just dealt with it. Uh, after a couple more times of going to the pool, we were, we were just like, we got to do something about uh, the cold because with, with the cold water, uh, your muscles tense up and we weren't having the um, effect that we wanted to have because we were, we were too worried about our, we were thinking more about how cold we were rather than getting the workout that we wanted to get. So keep that in mind. Um, one of the things that we did to overcome being cold was we purchased um, a wet jacket. Uh, basically a water jacket that they use for scuba diving or water uh, sports. 
That's just the upper torso jacket that zips up and goes up to her neck. And we're able to keep warm while in the pool when we wear this jacket. Um, one of the things with the jacket though, and water in general, you are more buoyant in water. And so with the jacket, we actually have to wear a uh, weight belt. Uh, or Lydia has to wear a weight belt. Uh, we have 15 pounds that she wears around her waist. Um, and it was from my scuba diving equipment. Um, and so she wears that 15 pound weight belt uh, so that her legs, we can feel, so she's not floating basically. One of the things uh, with walking, Lydia requires uh, an AFO when she walks normally. Um, so we got an ankle brace uh, that she can use in the water and it's just a cheap plastic uh, ankle brace. It's not state of the art, uh, but it does work. Uh, with the brace though, it requires that she wear shoes and we wore, um, we had scuba shoes that didn't quite work. They weren't tight enough to hold the ankle brace or to hold the brace with her foot. Uh, so we had to upgrade her shoes to an aquatic shoe. We purchased these shoes for her to walk with and hold that brace into place. And that's it. So we're going to use the magic of video, transport ourselves over to the pool, and you'll be able to see what we do uh, during the hour that we have reserved at the pool three times a week. Where are we at? Pool. Where it's a pool. What are we doing? I am going Aquatherapy? Yes. Aquatherapy. Aquatherapy. And while we're here, what we do is um, we do some steps on the with the staircase that we have, we walk half of the length of the pool until it gets too deep. We do sidestepping um, and we do balancing, uh, even uh, lifting our knees up and down. Uh, so there's a few different things we do in the pool. A lot of it has to do with control more than strength. So that's what we're doing here in the pool, aquatherapy building better control with Lydia's walking, stepping, and lifting her knee. Uh, so that's what we're here at the pool. We come here three times a week. Hold up. Hold up. I went out to the side. There you go. Okay.
So thanks for watching our video. We hope that you learned something. Um, we hope that uh, if you do decide to go to aqua therapy to be safe uh, and take a buddy, it's good for them. And if you're doing aqua therapy already and we miss something, let us know in the comments below so that we can incorporate that into our own uh, routine. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll be notified of every future video. We'll see you soon and be safe out there.